from the start of the earth. The start of the earth. Is he who unfolds the heavens like a velvet curtain? Lift your eyes on high and see the created be. The three earths in the ages of time. The three earths in the ages of time. What is his name? Yahuwah. What is his son's name? Yahushua. What is his name? Yahuwah. What is his son's name? Yahushua. Yahweh reigneth, he is clothed with majesty. Yahweh's clothes reign. He girded himself. The world also is established, that it cannot be moved. Thy throne is established of old, The floods have lifted up, O oh Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. of many waters, the mighty waves of the sea. My testimonies are very sure. Always be covered by ours. Yahweh forever. This earth is millions, if not billions of years old and was created perfect, ready for life. But due to the rebellion of Satan, the overthrow, when one third of all souls followed him, these imperfections came about. That prior earth age of the dinosaurs and man in his spiritual body are all well documented. These ancient animals have been dug up with buttercups still in their stomachs, undigested, as that worldwide catastrophe that brought that first earth age in the past, the old world that was, to an abrupt end, and froze those creatures in time. From the time of that catastrophe of Satan and this earth's fall, the earth as we know it today, the second earth built on the old foundation, has been off center in its movements, and the earth will be made right at the coming of our Lord at the seventh trumpet sounding. It will be reset on its correct axis, and all souls will be back into their spiritual bodies. Like the angels, where there will be no more tears and pain. Amen. And now friends, let our study begin. Today the whole world is trying to work out a treaty that will bring peace to Jerusalem and the Middle East, yet as hard as they try, true peace shall never come as long as there is wickedness on the earth. Yet at the return of Yahushua, our, Christ, those rudiments of all evil in the world, all of Satan's works and evil deeds will be completely gone, along with his church houses made by the hands of man. Yahuwah's loyal children shall not be touched. His wrath to come, just before his son's returns, Yahushua, will be only directed towards his enemies, and then true peace will come to the whole earth, in the thousand years millennium of our Lord and King. Amen. Now let our study begin from the book of Isaiah the 40th chapter verse 21 to 31. The meaning of number 40. Mentioning 146 times in scripture, the number 40 generally symbolizes a period of testing, trial, or probation. The one taken from the water during the first earth age and born through woman called Moses. During his life in the flesh age, he lived 40 years in Egypt and 40 years in the desert before our father selected him to lead his people out of slavery. Moses was also on Mount Sinai for 40 days and nights, on two separate occasions. The number 40 can also represent a generation of man. Because of their sins after leaving Egypt, Yahuwah, swore that the generation of Israelites who left Egyptian bondage would not enter their inheritance in Canaan, Deuteronomy 1. 
These children of Israel were punished by wandering the wilderness for 40 years before a new generation was allowed to possess the promised land. Yahushua, just days before his crucifixion, prophesied the total destruction of Jerusalem, in the books of Matthew and Mark, 40 years after his crucifixion in 30 AD, the mighty Roman Empire destroyed the city and burned its beloved temple to the ground. Judges who served 40 years include Othniel, Deborah and Barak, Eli and Gideon. The first three human kings over the children of Israel, Saul, David and Solomon, each ruled for 40 years. Abraham tried to bargain with his father, to not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah if 40 righteous people were found. Yahuwah, flooded the earth by having it rain for 40 days and nights, in Genesis. After the patriarch Jacob, Israel, died in Egypt, the Egyptians spent 40 days embalming his body, also in Genesis. Your Bible was written by 40 different people. Those called of Yahuwah, now are under probation, or judgment, based on how they live by every letter of his word today. Amen. Verse 21, Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? Have you advised, answered, comprehended, considered, declared, having, knowledge of, and to make it known to be learned, and to have, understanding in order to teach it to others. Now call and gather them together, be, obedient and proclaim it, by publishing and telling whosoever that, heareth it, as my witness, in order to expose, predict, explain, praise and declare my message. From the very first beginning of time, when the start of the earth began, as it was first created. Now let us explain here, about the foundation of the earth, the world that then was, as you might know about it. For your own father is telling you to study his word with understanding, and not by just reading it for this is not necessarily studying. To study it is to go back to the original languages to understand the many meanings of all the scriptures, then with the help of the Holy Spirit that will guide you where our Father has placed and explained within his word, the true meaning of that original inspired word, in the language used as first written, and not the English, as he teaches us. If you haven't studied in this manner, then your answer would be no to the understanding of the foundation of the earth. Our Father's word is not fragmented, but is complete and covers from the first of creation in that world that then was, in the first earth age when all souls were first created, to the distant eternity, beyond the millennium age, to the time of the great white throne judgment. Our Father wants and intends for you to understand it all. When you do not know all of his word, then you tend to go off his path and do many foolish things in worshipping him. Now every verse in the word is only a skeleton to build upon, from the meat of his word itself. As in Hebrew, for every letter is a word and every word is a meaning that can be used in a different form, throughout his word. Only with the spirit of truth all wisdom comes, as Yahushua plants the seed of his word into your mind. Then with the help of his Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in his name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance. That which is stored in your own spiritual mind, whatsoever I have said unto you. Then you shall be fruitful, bearing fruit, is called understanding, of his word. Amen. There are four questions in this verse, and so pay attention to each of them. If you are being taught the truth from Yahuwah's word, then the understanding is known to you, because you have heard it before as you studied. If the word is taught as it should be, then you have been instructed how it was in the beginning and during the very first earth age, as well as the destruction that came over the earth. 
when Yahuwah destroyed it. You know that the earth was made and created perfect in the very beginning, and it became void in time, Toho, in Hebrew, and then the spirit of Elohim moved to bring it back, to where it would be inhabitable. You would then understand that what is happening in this present earth age, is all caused by what happened in the past from the first earth that was created, and that some were chosen from that world that then was, first earth, to be of service to Elohim in this age of this man that cometh, meaning being born from the waters in the flesh tent or body. Verse 22, It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Our Father sits down as judge that waits, as his earth moves on a line forward marching in a circle, all in harmony to the universe, as so he designed it. And the living inhabitants in all the land well, judge, remain, marry, settle, establish, in their lurking, the hidden ones, the Kenites, who are also waiting, just like a cloud of locust as they spread out their celestial bodies, that revolve around the entire world, stretched out as a curtain, hidden from them in the world, in their tents, their evil bodies, waiting on their father Satan. Amen. The circle of the earth is the circuit, or vault which is the compass lines that are drawn around the earth. It is from these imaginary lines that we navigate, and set our boundaries, even when we stake out the property lines or building lots as we build our homes. The people are the inhabitants of the earth, and our father is calling us, each and every one of us, as grasshoppers. Meaning he is to let us all know that he is in total control of everything that happens in the heavens, as well as on the earth. Our father made it. He placed the stars and planets in the heavens, and he controls the paths that they will take, in the past, present and future times. Verse 23, That bringeth the princes to nothing, he maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. Go ahead appoint your rulers, and allow them to make, by appointing your judges, who execute judgment on Yahuwah's earth, all in vain and confusion, all fruitless, empty and in contempt, against him, as the locust, the Kenites, that fills their own bellies and destroys the living. Amen. In other words, what our father is saying, that he has a divine plan, and no man is going to interfere or stand in his way, from the execution of that plan. It doesn't matter what our government or any other government, has to say or does to interfere with that plan, it will all happen just as it is written in his word. For empires are created and fall according to Yahuwah, and no country on the lands will get in his way. For his divine purpose will all come into tuition, as it is designed to happen, just as he has planned it, by him alone. Verse 24, Yea, they shall not be planted, yea, they shall not be sown, yea, their stock shall not take root in the earth, and he shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither, and the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. Yea, as used in this verse, are the Kenites, the hidden ones in the world, our father calls them, the destroyers. Yahushua calls them the tares that were planted by Satan in the night, his children, that grow among the wheat, those children that belong to the kingdom of our father, Yahuwah. These tares are not going to be fastened, even the cut down ones, will not take on root on the earth. For when the mighty wind comes, thou shall dry up like straw and be consumed by the burning fire of Yahuwah. Amen. Verse 25, To whom then will ye liken me, or shall I be equal? saith the Holy One. 
consider or compare, my equal says Elohim? Well. Satan claims he will exalt himself and defy everything that people call God and every object of worship. He will even sit in the temple of God, claiming that he himself is God. Satan also said, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation, in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the most high. He took over the temple in Yahushua's day and don't be surprised my friends, every word used by Satan here, is taking place and will continue in these latter days. Did you know that he rules over most of the church houses in the world today? Our father is asking you in this verse, who compares to me, and of course the right answer is no one. But let us take a closer look at his church and what they teach in the world today, then compare. Many times traditions or teachings are created because of man's limited knowledge of Yahuwah's word as it was first written, so then it becomes something that is unknown or perhaps it is even hidden from them. So then, they go about to create the image of what they desire it to be as the lie in the world that only deceives them. These sets of traditions are what causes denominations or divisions among themselves as each group strictly follows. Because those men and women in charge have accepted those traditions, images and teachings as being of Elohim, it doesn't matter to them whether or not it did come from him, for those images are what holds each of the denominations together. The mindset of all the denomination leaders are the same and it doesn't matter to either of them what the other does, as long as each is allowed to worship and teach their own created thing. Now, when what is being taught by them, only goes against our father's inspired word. For he tells us in his word, when those teachings or traditions make void his word, then they become your stubble and upon Yahushua's return, all be blown away as if they had never existed. At the end of this coming earth age, if those teachings and traditions divert the attention of the believers away from the events and signs that our Father has given to us, then all those putting their faith in those traditions and evil teachings will be deceived by Satan, the Antichrist, claiming he is your Jesus. Now you should know where you really stand in this world today. That should answer who you are really serving in those church houses, built by the hands of men. Presently filling you up with their false teachings, created traditions, and pagan holidays, that only bear false witness, to the inspired truth of Yahuwah, our Father. Amen. Verse 26, Lift up your eyes on high. And behold who hath created these things, that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by names by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one faileth. What our Father is telling us to go out in the night, and look up at the stars of the heavens, that form a pictograph of biblical signs to explain his word in detail. For the full gospel was written in the heavens first, for all to see and he also said that they would be used for signs. The same laws that govern the heavenly bodies, govern the spiritual world, and the laws that govern the heavens, with its subjects, all show the gospels, both old and new all written in the heavens. The sun rises in the east, and sets in the west. Christ is the sun that comes in our time, as the strong man with an army. To give light, and unleash the heat of the wrath of Elohim, he comes to the outer court, of the sanctuary from the east and leaves the sanctuary, at the most holy place in the west. Christ is the bridegroom, come here, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. Revelation 21. Christ comes from the east, for just as the lightning comes from the east and flashes even to the west, so will the coming of the Son of Man be. 
in Matthew 24. Now modern constellations, were obviously not all named by Elohim, and some names appear to have adopted, the names of Greek mythology. But we could probably still find their meaning, as our father originally intended. Most of this knowledge is lost today, but the Egyptians listed 48 constellations and 1022 stars in the book, The Almagest. As the Roman Empire fell, this knowledge was lost to Western Rome, but was kept alive by Islam in the Byzantine Empire. Ptolemy described these constellations as follows, in the Northern Hemisphere there are 21, in the Zodiac there are 12, and in the Southern Hemisphere there are 15, all having Biblical significance. Our Father is telling us, that every one of those heavenly bodies, including the stars. He knows them all by name, for he created all of them. There is not one missing, they all are there. Just as he knows the name, and location of every star in the heavens, he also knows all the souls, of men and women on earth, and what is in their heart today. Here is a point to consider, my friends. The star in the east. Following the pattern of the first coming, this sign could also include a bright star to guide us home. Christ was born during the Feast of Tabernacles in late September. So the star at his birth, and first coming must have appeared in the east, at the end of the autumn sky, being the month of September and it may be the same star, or constellation that will announce his second coming as well. If we saw a bright new star, for several months before the end of the autumn sky in the east, it certainly would be a significant source of alarm for all those on the earth in these latter days, because it would come at a time when there is great trouble on the earth. The Bible says that the heavens, and its objects can be used for signs. Some prophecies tell us when to expect these signs. The solar calendar, and religious feasts are structured so, that these signs can appear on the feast days. Since a solar eclipse can only occur on a new moon, the eclipses can occur on the first day of any month, like Nis on 1, the new year, and even Passover, Nis on 14, and also the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Nis on 15 especially five days before Passover, as our Father spoke to us, as he thundered, in the book of John, when Yahushua said he saw Satan being thrown out of heaven on that day. This Feast of Tabernacles begins five days after the Day of Atonement and at the time the fall harvest, had just been completed. It was a time of joyous celebration, as the Israelites celebrated their father's continued provision for them, in the current harvest and remembered his provision, and protection during the forty years in the wilderness. As one of the three feasts that all native-born males, were commanded to participate in, the Feast of Tabernacles, the harvest is brought in, is mentioned multiple times in scripture sometimes called the Feast of the Ingathering, the Feast to the Lord, or the Feast of Booths. The three feasts when they all gathered were, Passover, Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. During the eight days of the feast, the Israelite believers would dwell in booths or tabernacles that were made from the branches of trees. Then after seven days of feasting, again on the eighth day was to be a holy convocation when you were to cease from work and offer another sacrifice to Yahuwah, in honor of his son on the eighth day, the son of man cometh on the eighth day. Also note, Christ appeared after his crucifixion, to the apostles, twice on the eighth day. The Feast of Tabernacles, like all the feasts, was instituted by Elohim as a way of reminding Israelites in every generation of their deliverance by him from Egypt. Of course, 
The feasts are also significant in that they foreshadow the work and actions of the coming Messiah. Much of Yahushua's public ministry took place in conjunction with the holy feasts set forth by his father, Yahuwah. There are also some of us that believe, and it was most likely, during the Feast of Tabernacles, Yahushua was born. While the world celebrates Christ's birth on December 25th, another pagan holiday, like Easter, that goes back and has its origin in Baal worship, with Jezebel and her husband, King Ahab. For most scholars, today acknowledge that this was a Christian tradition created by man, which began in the 4th century AD by the Roman Catholic Church. A true believer accepts the fact that Yahushua was conceived but not born in December and after nine months later, to be born in the month of September. The woman of the day would always talk about their conception day, and not the day of the birth as we do today, for this is when life first takes place at conception, it begins in their womb, not nine months later. Amen. So now the next time you become filled with pride and glory within yourself, stop and look at the stars. You were created for the same purpose as they were and that is to give your father the glory and honor and power that gives him pleasure. Verse 27, Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speakest, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord? and my judgment is passed over from my God. Now for the retranslation. To Israel, this message is for all of the thirteen tribes, he declared, as he rules as the Elohim, for his path is hidden, and keep in secret from the adversary, the enemy. For Yahuwah has judged and will pass his judgment on them and their gods. Friends. You don't hide anything from your father, and his judgment, is absolutely fair according to his absolute plan, from beginning to end. The key to understanding how to be blessed by your father, is to understand his plan. Without that plan you are headed for trouble in this life, and the blessings from him will be withheld. This is not talking about salvation, but the blessings that you can receive by doing things his way as his word teaches us. Verse 28, Hast thou not known? Hast thou not heard, that the everlasting Elohim, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? Now let us retranslate this very important verse from the Hebrew and then back to the English. Do you know, have you known? The Eternal Everlasting One, the Supreme Elohim, Yahuwah, the Creator, Terminator and the Destroyer, of the Earth? Don't be shocked or faint by that statement. Examine and search out the reason to obtain understanding in order to have wisdom. Who, what, where, when and why? The purpose and cause that will inspire your belief. Do you know how many times this earth has been destroyed by our father as of now? Once, billions of years ago as it stood in total darkness for there was no light, no sun. That is why in Genesis 1 verse 3 our father said, let there be light. In Genesis 1 verse 2, the earth was completely submerged in the water, solid and frozen in time, without any life as a big solid ice ball, the true ice age, that was just floating in total dark space, waiting to be reborn. Then I saw the new heaven and the new earth that was to be built on the old foundation, and he commanded, let the dry land be seen, for it was hidden under the water, it was already there in the very beginning, in the ancient world during earth age 1 during Genesis 1 verse 1. But now in Genesis 1 verse 2, the earth was totally in the water. This draws us back to the first book of the Bible, Bereshit. The beginnings, 
in the Hebrew, beginnings plural here meaning more than one beginning. For in verse 2, of chapter 1, where yet to be created earth, the land that already pre-existed, but in a state of formlessness and desolation, in the Hebrew, tohu wabu kiu, meaning without form, for the land itself was immersed in the surging waters of the deep. Genesis 1 verse 1, this is the first earth age that existed for our father, the true Elohim created the earth to be inhabited, and then he destroyed it. There was an entire earth age that existed between verses 1 and 2 of Genesis chapter 1. This first earth age was destroyed by our father because of Satan's overthrow, where he and one third of all the inhabitants of the earth at that time rebelled against the father and his son. As spoken in 2 Peter, Jeremiah, Job, Proverbs, and Jude. We all came from Yahuwah, our souls was with him in the very beginning before this age. Even Yahushua, said in Matthew 13 that these mysteries are hidden to them, about the overthrow by Satan on the earth that then was, the old world that was during the first earth age. Also in the great book of revealing, Revelation, chapter 12, goes back to the world that then was, where Satan deceived one third of the children, called the stars. At the great overthrow, on the earth that was first started, as created, the very first one, in the very beginning. We have just covered these three important verses in the book of the beginnings, in order for you to have a deeper meaning with full understanding in our Father's word and how they fit into his plan for these end days. Amen. Verse 29, He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increaseth strength. Amen. Now for the retranslation. He gives them the capacity and the means to produce, by granting them his might, power, strength, substance and wealth. Given to those that are wearisome from the flight, the laborers of the field against Satan and his children. He will help them to be successful by building them up with abundance, the wealth of his word and strength, the power from above, his Holy Spirit, against the evil forces in this world. Without your father you don't have a chance to overcome. Our father will always care for them that truly love him. Those that are weak, he will build up and make strong. He will feed them with his word, and you will see a change in that person's life. Our Heavenly Father never grows weary, of helping one that has the courage to ask for his help, just ask and you will receive. Verse 30, Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Even the young shall become weary from their labor and will try but only stumble and fall. Without Yahuwah on your side you will not succeed against Satan's deception and his wit. Even a young person in the best of their health will get tired and weary at times. The human body can only endure for a certain period of time, but not your father. Remember the question for this chapter, is who do you compare him to? No man in the flesh can compare in any way to him. Verse 31, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run, and not be weary, and they shall walk, and not faint. Our Father, Yahuwah want you to wait on his Son, Yahushua. And those that wait on the seven trumpet, shall spring up, grow, renew, go forward and strike through, with a mighty force and power, they shall mount up with the wings as eagles, labor and not be exhausted and carry on to be successful, to win their prize of eternal life. Renew means that they shall be charged in their strength. When you see the servants of Elohim, 
you will see a bunch of can-do people. That is why when you see those that are wallowed up in their own self-pity and feel sorry for themselves. There is no need for when your father has promised to give you everything you need, just for the asking. Those so hung up need a jolt, to wake them up and refocus, their minds back on your heavenly father. The time came for Job, after he had laid in self-pity, listening to those false preachers rambling on about nothing, and then Elohim told Job to get to his feet, gird himself up like a man, and give me answers. When Job got to his feet, and straightened out his thinking, Elohim blessed him with far more than he had before his time of testing. We will all have our bad days, but in your father's strength, you can be recharged. If you have the faith in Yahushua, you know that you have the victory over Satan, and anything that this world can throw at you. If you have faith, you know that your father will take care of you, through anything that seems insurmountable at the time. Your Elohim has complete control over your enemies, and he know the intent of their thoughts and minds before they even have the chance to act upon it. So then, he will take care of you, if you have the faith to love and trust him with your whole life. Amen. We have come to the close, of our study but let us ask you, what about the third heaven? Peter taught us, in 2 Peter 3, about three heavens. And also three earths. So then, let us count them, note we also corrected these verses. Verse 5, for this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of Elohim the heaven was of old, and the earth standing above the water and then within the water, this is the very first heaven and earth of long ago. Verse 6, whereby the world at that time, overflowed with water, perished. Perished to destroy fully because of Satan's rebellion against our father and his son. Verse 7, but the heaven and the earth which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto the fire, against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. This second heaven and earth, presently will be destroyed by fire, including the son of perdition, which means the son of death and that is Satan. Verse 13, Now we, according to his promise, look for a new heaven and a new earth, wherein dwelleth the just and righteous. This is the third heaven and earth, to come. The future kingdom of Yahuwah to include his son, Yahushua and all righteousness. Now to recap these past verses. The first earth, number one, perished by water. Then the present earth, number two, will perish by fire. And then the finally the earth to come, number three. All three are all exposed outlined and counted out by Peter here in these verses, for your understanding providing you study your father's word as he so desires his children to do so. Verse 18, But for now, grow in grace, benefit and favor so that the knowledge of our Lord, Yahushua, the Messiah, our Christ, to him be glory, honor, praise and worship, both now and forever. Amen.